Hi everybody, welcome to Simple Art at Home with me, Laura Houston. Today we have a very special episode. We're going to learn about John Lewis, a civil rights activist and American politician. Before we get started on our art lesson, let's take a look at some fabulous kids art that you sent in to me. Kids art. Thank you so much for sending in your art. I just love seeing uh, your work. I always keep my email down there at the bottom corner of the screen so you know how to reach me. I especially love some of those portraits of Dr. Kismekia Corbett. They were just fabulous. Before we get into our art lesson on John Lewis, I thought it would be helpful to teach you some background information that you might not know about him. So why don't we go ahead and learn about John Lewis. Meet John Robert Lewis, civil rights leader and American politician. John Lewis was born on February 21, 1940 in the state of Alabama. His parents were sharecroppers. Sharecroppers farm a piece of land owned by someone else. As a child, John picked cotton to help his family earn money. After high school, John wanted to attend Troy College near his home but it was a segregated school. Black students were not allowed to attend. Segregation means keeping people apart. In many cases, it is a form of discrimination because one group of people is treated unfairly. John didn't really know what to do. He had been listening to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. speak on the radio, so John wrote a letter to Dr. King and asked him what he should do. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. mailed a bus ticket to John and invited John to join him in Selma, Alabama. Decades later, John said that this letter was unbelievable and definitely life-changing. John Lewis was inspired by the activism of African Americans such as Rosa Parks and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. John wanted to change the unfair laws called Jim Crow laws that separated African Americans from whites. The Jim Crow laws limited the freedom and opportunity for African American people. Many people disagreed with Dr. King because they did not want segregation to end. But Dr. King was a role model to John Lewis. He said, Dr. King taught us to love. Growing up, we were taught to respect the dignity and worth of every human being and never give up on anyone. We tried to reach them with kindness, hope, and love. So you may beat me and throw me in jail, but I'm not going to engage in violence. I'm going to respect you as a human being. John Lewis became active in the civil rights movement and organized sit-ins at lunch counters and other segregated places. He enrolled in a university in Nashville, Tennessee, and continued to fight peacefully for racial justice. He participated in the 1961 Freedom Rides, when whites and blacks rode buses together into the South to protest segregation. The Freedom Buses were often attacked by angry mobs. In 1961, John Lewis helped organize and spoke at the historic March on Washington, where Dr. King delivered his famous I Have a Dream speech. Although Lewis was still only in his early 20s, he was recognized as one of the big six leaders of the civil rights movement. In 1965, John Lewis led more than 600 peaceful protesters across a bridge in Selma, Alabama, in response to local violence against civil rights activists. The protesters were attacked by law officers, and more than 50 people, including Lewis, were hospitalized. 
The event helped pass the Voting Rights Act, which stopped the many ways used to prevent African Americans from voting. Here is a picture of protesters crossing the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma, Alabama. This picture shows the moments before the violence in 1965. More facts about John Robert Lewis. In 1966, he became the director of the Voter Education Project. In 1977, President Jimmy Carter put John Lewis in charge of the Peace Corps. In 1981, John was elected to the Atlanta, Georgia City Council. In 1986, John was elected to the U.S. House of Representatives, where he continued to peacefully fight for equality for all people. Honors and Awards In 1975, John was awarded the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolent Peace Prize. In 2011, President Barack Obama awarded John with the Presidential Medal of Freedom. John Lewis is also an author. In 2016, one of his books called The March won the National Book Award. Look at this picture taken in the year 2015. 50 years after that first protest walk across the bridge, thousands of people walked again to honor the Civil Rights Movement, the Voting Rights Act, John Lewis, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and all of the other people who marched for equality back in 1965. Here we see John Lewis standing on the same bridge in 2019. He said, Ours is not the struggle of one day, one week, or one year. Ours is the struggle of a lifetime, or maybe many lifetimes. And each one of us in every generation must do our part. John Lewis passed away in July of 2020, but his work, his actions, and his words will not be forgotten. Thank you. Well, I hope you learned something new about John Lewis. I know I certainly did when I was researching to um, make that little video. So we're actually going to do two art projects today. One will be at a very beginner level and the second project will be at an intermediate level. But you can be any age or any grade to do either of the projects and maybe you want to do both of them. So we're going to start at the uh, beginner level. So I'm going to move over to the table. So I tried to think a lot about what kind of project we could do in honor of John Lewis. And this slide uh, from the slideshow, you know, made me think about the idea of peace and love because both Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and John Lewis um, believed in nonviolence, uh, and in 1975, John Lewis won, he was awarded the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolent Peace Prize. So I thought we would do something that symbolizes peace. So I thought for be a good beginner project would, to be, would be to draw a peace dove. So you'll need a piece of paper and a pencil, and you are going to want a good eraser. So I'm just going to start by sketching lightly. I'm gonna put them over here. And we'll start with the head over here. And I'll go over this darker with pen a little bit later in case you can't see really well. But we'll just kind of do the head and a short beak, more of a graceful head there. Get that eraser handy for erasing. And then the head will kind of come like this. And underneath, we'll have the neck and the body. And we can have a wing, and I might adjust this. We'll have a wing coming out here. Maybe back, there'll be a bird in flight, a peace dove in flight, something like this. And perhaps something like this, and then another wing coming up like this, which will be on the other side of the bird's body, of the dove's body. And maybe a little tail, a 
it's something like this. Okay. And these are just little quick lines to signify feathers. Maybe the tail will come like this. And I'll go over this, like I said before, with black pen so you can see it a little better. Okay. And I'll be erasing some of those lines, but let's see if you can see this a little bit better. So in order to draw the bird, you have the head right here and go right into the beak. Do the eye. Quick little line like that. And let's draw his, his belly area coming down and one wing coming like this into his body. And then you can kind of do a quick line like that and another wing back here that's going behind his body and kind of curve this up, something like that. Okay, and that's the basic shape. I'm gonna take my eraser to erase some of the extra lines that I don't want showing through because doves are white. Well, the dove that I want to show is going to be white. A peace dove is generally a, a white bird. And I'll show you a couple of techniques how you can leave most of him white but add a little color to him. Okay. Now, since the bird is so simple, I'm going to add an interesting background. So I have this device here where I can make circles. And if you want, you can find an object from the kitchen to trace. And I'm just going to draw various sized circles, some overlapping. I'm just going to put them all in the background just to add interest. You might want to add hearts. I, I'm just drawn to circles right now. Let's see. So I'm going to just add some in. I have some going off the page too if you want to add some circles going off the page. I think it looks good if they're different sizes. Maybe make some smaller ones here. And I'm going to leave this section down here blank because I'm going to write a sentence. For some of our older students who are watching, you might want to research some famous quotes or words that John Lewis said, and you might want to add those to your drawing. But here we go, and I'll put a few. Even though I'm going to write a sentence down here, I think I have room to add a few circles to add interest. And again, some can overlap. Maybe I'll put one right here. Okay, I think that's okay. I might add like one more right here. Okay, all right. And then in this blank space, since we know, uh, you know, John Lewis really believed in nonviolence, why don't we write a sentence right here? Why don't we say, John, I'm gonna capitalize his name, Lewis. We always do capital letters at the beginning of a person's you know, first name and last name, their proper nouns. John Lewis believed in, and why don't we do the word peace in all capital letters. But you can write anything that you want. That's just a suggestion and you can, you can color yours in any way that you want to. I think that um, I will start by adding just a few blue streaks on this peace dove. Even though my dove is white, I'm just gonna add a little bit of a blue streaks here and there, just to show that it's just not completely plain white. I think it adds interest to our painting, just something like this. And these will eventually kind of, you know, fade, fade off there. Okay, so just a couple of blue streaks, maybe like there too. 
And then for his beak, I'm just gonna add a little gray color. If you wanna do orange, you can. Let's do a little gray color on the top of his beak. As for the circles, I am going to fill the circles with warm colors. Now warm colors are reds and oranges and yellows. Those are warm colors. And I want to do warm colors because I'm going to put a cool color uh, behind all of these circles. I'm gonna put some green behind it and the warm colors will really stand out. So I'm adding shades of red and orange and yellow. And um, don't be afraid to mix colors. You know, even if you are using crayons, you can still overlap your colors. So I'm gonna put some red, reds and oranges and yellows. And remember, you might want to fill your background with whatever pattern or design you would like. The, the piece of drawing that we made is very simple. And by simple, I mean it doesn't have a lot of patterns on it. It's, it's very like simple and plain. So I think it's okay to do a background that might be a little more busy because I think that will help our dub stand out even more and it'll make our art a little more interesting. And again, you might want to use hearts, you can do stripes, anything that you feel like in your background. I'm going to be mixing some colors here. Why don't I add a little more yellow to brighten this? There we go. And this is just one idea. You know, if you think of something else that you want to draw instead of a piece of, you can do something different. I always tell you I'm not grading you. This is your art project. You can do whatever you want. Just um, think about John Lewis and think about what you learned in that short video or maybe if you've been learning about him in class, maybe something that um, speaks to you. You know, we, we did self, we, not self portraits, we did portraits of Dr. Kismekia Corbett two weeks ago and you can use the same um, techniques that you learned for portrait drawing in case you want to make a portrait of John Lewis. That could be an idea if you're a more of an advanced student. And I also really hope that you take pictures of your artwork and send the pictures in to me. I love seeing what you do. And I did bring up uh, Dr. Kismekia Corbett. So two weeks ago, we learned about her. She helped discover the vaccine for the coronavirus and she is also she's an african-american woman a young woman who works with dr anthony fauci at the national institute of health she's a scientist so um, i told i emailed her and told dr corbett that we would send our drawings to her so if any of you have drawings or if you followed along with that lesson or if you want to go back and watch it you can and then email me your drawing and I will put it on this big slideshow that we are sending to her as a big thank you to her to show her that you know that we think she is amazing and um, to thank her for all of her hard work and helping to end the pandemic. So that might be something you want to go back and do and look at that lesson. And then last week, we learned about Sister Rosetta Tharp. And Sister Rosetta was an amazing electric guitar player. She was also an African-American woman and she uh, was the master of electric, uh, of distortion on the electric guitar. And she was a, a big role model to many of 
the musicians that came after her. So that's also an interesting lesson if you want to find that. You might have learned about her in class as well. So I'm mixing a different green here. This green has more blue in it. I think it just adds interest to this painting to kind of switch up the colors. But as you can see now, the, the piece dove is very plain and simple. And the piece dove does stand out against the, the background because we're putting you know different colors in the background. I'm gonna add even more designs to the background. I'll show you in a few minutes as soon as I finish with all this green. I'm going right over the words. You can paint over a uh, black pen, especially with watercolors. So I'm using watercolors. If you're using a different kind of paint that's thicker, like tempera paint or acrylic paint, it might cover up your words. So just kind of be aware of that. Watercolors are very um, transparent. But uh, I, I enjoy using watercolors. Sometimes you'll see me use crayons on Simple Art at Home. I, I like to change it up, use different things. Sometimes I use oil pastels. Okay, I'm almost finished with the background, the, well, the green, the blue-green part of the background. So notice how the green is considered a cool color. So blues and greens and purples are cool colors on the color wheel. And so they, cool colors really stand out against warm colors. And the warm colors are the reds, the oranges, and the yellows. There. Okay, so I'm just going to do a one more design to the background. So I'm gonna take some orange and I think I'm going to add just some little soft designs all through here. I'm gonna mix up, I'm gonna draw some hearts. And again, you don't have to do this. This is just something that I'm adding in to my art. I like to bring in the idea of hearts and swirls and I might go over some of the red. I might overlap a little bit to add interest. So here's some more hearts. I'm just going all around it. I'm not going to go over my words because I don't want the sentences to be difficult to read. But the overall appearance will be, I think, a little more interesting. Be and like I said, because the dove is very plain and simple, I'm just adding a more detailed background. And you might want to color your bird with many colors. It's completely up to you. Just adding, I'm going through the background, and my hearts are not perfect. I'm just, I'm just, letting my paintbrush kind of go where it wants to go. I don't know if you've ever painted much with watercolors, but the swirls kind of pick up the curve in the circles and then the hearts match the theme of the piece dove. Put some more right here. Put some swirls in here. Okay, I'm gonna add a few more swirls. I'm so curious, I really hope you send me pictures of your art. Uh, when I see what you do, it helps me uh, figure out what I wanna do for future lessons when I see your ability. And if you have special ideas that you would like me to teach you, you can email me and make some suggestions. Okay, I'm gonna do one more swirl right here. Okay, so um, this was an example of a piece dove. It's quite simple, but as you can see, simple can be beautiful. And 
you know, this is just a suggestion. You can color yours any way that you want to, but notice how the background is very busy and the piece dove is just very quiet and peaceful. So there is an example of a beginner project. So now I'm going to move to the intermediate project. So I'm starting with a new piece of paper. You will need some sort of a straight edge. If you don't have a ruler, you don't need one. You can use the edge of a book. You can use the edge of your Chromebook. Um, you can use anything with a straight edge. Even a cardboard box would work for, for this project because we're not measuring. We're just using the straight edge part of it. Okay. So um, in the video, and maybe you learned about this in class, um, the, the Edmund Pettus Bridge was very, very important. And you know, this is where the, the peace march occurred. So we're going to draw this landscape of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And we're gonna use perspective, one point perspective to show the river going back into the distance. We're gonna add some people going across the bridge. Now, don't get worried. I, it probably sounds difficult, but I'm gonna show it to you in a very easy and simple way. I'll show you step-by-step step how to do it. Okay, so we're going to start with a horizon line. So please start with a pencil because we'll be doing a lot of erasing. And the horizon line will be just below the middle of the paper. So if this to me looks like middle, but we're going to do it lower because we want, we're going to show the horizon line is where the sky meets the water and it'll be below the bridge. So we'll do it a little bit lower. So something about, something like here. And I'm just sketching with my pencil and then I'll go over it again with, uh, with black pen. So now I want you to make an X, uh, not too dark because you're going to be um, erasing it. So the X will be above the horizon line. That's going to be our vanishing point because we're going to show one point perspective. We're going to show a river going back into the distance. So if I lay my ruler here, I'm not going to trace the line with my ruler. It's just to help me visualize that we're going to have a line that's the edge of the water kind of going back this way. And you can see if I were to continue it, it would hit the X. It doesn't matter where you start at the bottom as long as you're aiming for that X. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. And again, it doesn't matter where you start. So I'm just gonna kind of move this out of the way. I know I'm going to have a line that kind of goes this way towards the X so that I'm stopping at the horizon line. And it, if I were to keep going, I would touch the X, but I'm not going to keep going. And then here, we're going to show the trees or bushes in the far off distance. And again, please use pencil because we're gonna erase some of the unimportant lines. So these can just be like some trees or bushes. Okay. And from here, we can keep this X here and let's draw some little um, lines that might show the movement of the water. So I'm gonna move my ruler out of the way, but I'm just help using it to kind of help me eyeball that like visualize that these lines are going in that direction. <clears throat> so there you have some lines and then this would be, you know, the line of the river. So at this point, I'm going to erase the X as best I can. And we're going to start by drawing the bridge. Now um, the bridge will have the big arch that goes up and over. And then we're gonna use our rulers to make the line uh, where the, the road, where the cars and the people walk across the bridge. So I'm just going to start, I know I want the top of the bridge to hit about right here on my paper. I'm gonna bring it down so it goes over the river and kind of ends in the, the bushes over here. You might have to practice it a little bit to get the arc, um, you know, the way that you want it. I want it something like this, a little, something like that. 
and I will erase the extra lines. Obviously, we're just sketching. <clears throat> so let's do this so that you can see it a little bit better. Okay, I, I'm gonna use a thinner Sharpie. Okay, I know the bridge is going to be in front of everything, so I'm just gonna have it come like this. Kind of like this. And then it'll come over here on this side and over here on this side. And then we will also have <clears throat> the straight line right, going right across the front of it where the people would walk across the bridge. And let me do this a little bit better. And we'll do this again right here. Okay. And looking at this, I might lower where I have my bushes because I want those to show up a little bit more. So that's why we use pencil first because then you can kind of modify your composition as you go. So I'm gonna bring this down a little bit lower and I'm gonna stop and go um, behind. Actually, I'm not gonna keep going because I forgot. Let's add this part of the bridge, this vertical line right here. And I want the bushes to be behind it. So the vertical line is going to attach from this part of the bridge right here, okay? And I wanna make sure that the bushes, as I said, go behind it. See that trick? And then we'll do the same thing over here. So here's the edge of the river. There's our lines in the water. Going back to the same vanishing point. And then let's draw this connecting structure piece here. There. Okay, and now I can draw you know, the bushes. This one can go higher if we want to. Okay, and let's draw the line for the river. And we can also draw some vertical lines along the road part of the bridge that cars would drive over or the people would walk over. Just adding those on. And in a few minutes, I'm going to take my eraser and erase some of the extra lines so they're not so confusing to you, but I'll do that at, uh, after one more step. This should be more like this. Okay, so now let's draw these vertical lines that help support the arch of the bridge. So I'm just going to take my ruler and draw some vertical lines that are kind of thick. You see that? And I'll put one here. So this bridge is very recognizable. And one of the reasons it's recognizable is because of these specific architectural pieces that we are um, drawing on it. And people will say, oh, hey, that's the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Why don't we do one more right here to kind of balance it out. Okay. Then I might make this line a little thicker. Okay. And we'll color this in too, and it'll make it'll make more sense. Why don't we put some little like bushes around the bottom down here so it looks like it's going into the ground, something like that. And why don't we add some clouds in the sky? Something like this, some puppy clouds. 
And before we draw people on the bridge, I'm going to start erasing some of these extra lines so they're not as confusing. Whoops, so they're not as confusing to you. Got to be careful not to bend your paper like that, but it happens. I'm sure you've all done that before. There we go. It's looking better. I always make sure I have a good eraser, and that way it's not as stressful. And um, and try not to get too frustrated if yours doesn't you know turn out exactly the way you want it to. I think I'm going to add. So now I'm going to look at this a little bit. I'm going to add kind of like a line right here to kind of show the edge of. It's like the horizon line continuing but separating the like the trees off in the distance there. I think that helps. Now, when we draw some people, we're going to keep them very simple. They'll be silhouettes. And for the silhouette, I'll hold this up and show you in just a second. They're just going to look something like this. Okay, so we're going to put silhouettes like that. So all it is, we're going to draw a circle for a head. Okay, so draw a circle for a head right there. And then just draw an oval shape going down for the torso. And then like the legs you can't see because the legs are like behind this, um, this barrier here. And if you wanna put some hats on the people, you can make the people different heights, like some are taller and some are shorter. I'm gonna put a hat on this guy. And you could put a sign, like maybe there's a protest sign. I'm not going to try to write letters because it's too far off in the distance to write letters on the sign. We can put somebody like walking here to make it look like um, everybody is just still walking. And it's okay if you're going over the, the line of your landscape because just color the people in solid, like they're silhouettes, and it'll still work fine. So you wanna give the idea that there is a line of people crossing the bridge. If you wanna add more people, you can. Maybe this will be John Lewis, how about that? Didn't he lead everybody? We'll put him in the center, okay. So that one we know is John. Okay, so now it looks like we can start adding some color. Okay, I'm gonna use paint. You can use anything that you want. If you want to just use um, pencil, you can. Curve this down a little bit more. But I will start with, maybe you're gonna use crayons. I'm gonna start with the bridge. And I'm going to make the bridge like a gray color. It's actually black in my watercolors, but as you know, if you've ever used watercolors, they're pretty um, see-through, translucent. So it comes out kind of gray, which is fine. I think the bridge in the is cement color from what we saw. I think it is cement color. So I think a gray or a black will be fine. Okay, and then all the supports, like these architectural supports, we'll paint them the same color. There we go. And then let's paint the, the walking part or the driving part of the bridge gray as well. Or black. Now, um, some of the older students, you might want to research some quotes that John Lewis said because you'll have space 
on this drawing to add in a quote. Like you can add a quote over the river right here. I might show you an example of that, but I think it's, I like adding writing to art because it helps tell a story sometimes. And this is a tribute to John Lewis, so why not? Okay, why don't we do that before I color the river? So one thing he did say, it was a quote that said, um, if not us, then who? And then he said, if not now, then when? And then we can write, if you want to, you can write his name like with a line underneath. I mean, a line next to the J, in front of the J. Put John Lewis. If you want, we can add quote marks. You don't have to add writing to your art, but it, it does help tell the story sometimes. If you want, you know, if you really want the viewer to understand what's going on. I'm painting the Alabama River. This, this took place in Selma, Alabama. Alabama is a state in the south, the southeast of the United States. It's pretty much where Dr. Martin Luther King had his headquarters uh, during the Civil Rights Movement. And as you know, John Lewis worked closely with Dr. Martin Luther King and many others. So this is just, just putting some blue on here to represent the water in the river. And again, if you're using uh, thicker paint, if you're using acrylic paint or tempera paint, you probably don't want to paint over your words. You can paint around your words. That looks nice too. Okay, then we've got some water. Okay, and then why don't we add some green over here to represent the land. Is it making more sense to you now? Like you can kind of see what this picture is. And the one point perspective helps it look like the river is going off into the distance. We put that little X there for a reason. The X was our vanishing point. Because whenever you're trying to show perspective in art, whatever is near the bottom of the paper is going to be wider. And as you go back, you draw it narrower skinnier. And I can draw this here. I'm going to add some brown as well to this you know, to show that it's more like there's like dirt mixed in here or just to add some interest just in certain patches. If you're using crayons you can mix brown with green. <clears throat> okay, I might go in and, you know, change that a little bit later or add more to it, but I just want to kind of finish the, the main parts to show you. I'm going to show this as um, at a sunset. The sky will have a sunset. Oops, I was saying sky, so I took blue. <laughs> ah, this is where I can take my paper towel and blot some of that up and just go right over it with green. If anything, it just adds interest, makes it a little more interesting. There we go. Sometimes it's hard to talk and paint at the same time, but I bet some of you are really good at that. But it's okay, if you make a mistake, just, just keep going. Just try to cover it half the time the person looking at your art will never even know that that was a mistake. 
you've probably done that in class when you're writing your essay and you say a word out loud and you end up writing the word that you said out loud instead of the word that you wanted to write in your essay. I don't know, that's happened to me and it usually happened to my students. Okay, I'm gonna add a little brown into this side now just to show that it's a combination of ground. There's some ground in there, some dirt, some greenery. Darken certain parts of it there. Okay. Now, as far as the sky goes, we're gonna make the sky with oranges and yellows and a little bit of purple. It's going to be a sunset. But I'm going to do something that you might think is a little strange. I'm going to put some gray in the clouds. And I'm doing this to add a little bit of symbolism. Because maybe to show that these, these people, these civil rights activists who are marching on the bridge, are going to push away these gray clouds. Because we're going to... We're going to put, um, if this is John Lewis, we're going to put all kinds of like yellow behind him, like he's a shining light. So just like you've learned in class, perhaps that there's symbolism in poetry and there's symbolism in novels, there's also a lot of symbolism in art. So let's start with the center here. And we're going to put yellow all around here because this represents that shining light, John Lewis. And by shining light, I don't mean a physical light. I mean um, somebody who is doing good work for the world. That's what I mean by a shining light. Okay, and then we can change this yellow, we can broaden it out and add some orange because this will be, like I said, a sunset time. And the re one of the reasons I did this is because we have so much blue in the river, in the Alabama River there, that I didn't want to just keep adding more blue in the sky. It would just be too much blue. So I thought, why not make some sort of a sunset? Maybe it's a sunrise. Do you think of it like that? A sunset or a sunrise of, of goodness. <laughs> okay. And now we can extend this out even more. So now I'm gonna use a different shade of orange out here. I'm gonna bring in more orange in the sky, and then it's eventually going to give way to some purple. And I, I really think sometimes it's more interesting to look at art that has interesting colors, and it's a little bit more unexpected. We can blend a little bit in right here. There we go. Can you kind of see the effect that is building here? More orange here. You can still do this with crayons. I'm just going to add some water and then I'm going to add, like I told you, I would add a little purple. And just on the, there we go. Look at that. I like that touch of purple there because it makes the other, it makes the orange. Orange and um, purple, I think, are complementary colors. And they really stand out against each other. Okay, so I'm going to just stop for a moment and look at this and talk about what 
we did here. So this is an example of one point perspective. We have the river going back into the distance. We drew the Edmund Pettus Bridge. Do we wanna write the name of the bridge on it? Why don't we do that? I'm just gonna write it on the side over here. E-D-M-U-N-D, -E Edmund Pettus Bridge. That way you'll remember your history lesson. <laughs> Edmund Pettus Bridge. We added a quote from John Lewis and uh, we showed depth with the bridge being in front of the horizon. So I'm gonna hold it up so you can see some of the details and we have people on the bridge. I really hope you send me pictures of your artwork because I'd love to see how yours turned out. Okay, so I am going to meet you back up at the easel. Okay. So here we have our bridge, and then here we have our peace dove. So thank you so much for joining me today. And um, I really hope you send in pictures of your artwork. My email's there on the corner of the screen. And before we go, let's take one last look at that fabulous kids art. So keep sending me your art. I'll see you next week, bye-bye. Kids art. 